Thank you so much for having me tonight, Ron. And I wanted to welcome everybody to, you know, Casita Maria's virtual space here. Um, so as Ron mentioned, my name is Gail Heidel and I'm the Director of Creative Arts for Casita Maria. Um, our staff, as well as I'm sure many of you, um, are all working at home, um, but we're looking to reopening Casita Maria this fall. Um, so we hope, you know, as it allows that we can all meet like together in real space um, when time and the pandemic permits. Um, our building is located in Hunts Point in the Bronx at 928 Simpson Street. So it's a short walk from the six train, um, the Hunts Point station. So usually this book club meets in our gallery, which is located on the sixth floor of our building. And we select books that kind of unpack the content of the artwork that would be hanging in the gallery. So I put a link to our virtual gallery exhibition. So I hope, you know, maybe either tonight or sometime before the next book club, you can go to casitamaria.org slash gallery and look at Annie Legnini's virtual exhibition. It's called Bronx Spaces. And um, she, there's 25 portraits of Bronx sites on our website, but the the whole exhibition, it'll be in Casita's gallery in person probably next year, um, but the full span of the exhibition is gonna include portraits of 100 Bronx sites. Um, and they're from all over the Bronx and from, you know, different backgrounds and, you know, um, represent, you know, artists and entrepreneurs. And, and she also asked them, you know, what's your favorite restaurant? So all of the, the Bronx spaces um, has a story associated with it that you can read, you know, 25 stories on our website. Um, so I just would like to invite you to imagine that you're surrounded by that artwork as we're in this virtual space. If you also have a little more time, you can learn more about Casita's long history. We were founded in 1934 in El Barrio and then moved to the Bronx in 61. And we offer uh, an after school program for a thousand young people ages K through 12. Um, we're currently um, providing, uh, you know, remote, uh, like a limited uh, schedule for remote summer camp. Um, and then we'll see what the fall looks like, if it's going to continue to be virtual, or we also have a hybrid plan in place where sometimes it would be in person, sometimes it would be remote. Um, so we're still waiting uh, for, for guidance from the city. Um, and then as far as my department, um, we reach about 40,000 community members through public programming like this book club. Um, and we also have a number of visual and performing art events, you know, that include theater and dance. We're working with Arturo O'Farrell. We have an event on August 6th that'll be broadcast or cablecast on BronxNet um, and then also could be watched on Facebook later. Um, so we're doing a lot um, and as most people have, we've pivoted to you know, be here in the virtual space. So I just wanna thank you once again for taking time out um, to be in community together um, here on Zoom. Uh, I'll pass it back over to you, Ron, and uh, I hope you all have a great discussion this evening. Thank you so much, Gail. Thank you. I think it's, I think it's amazing that, I mean, Casita Maria, of course, but so many institutions, the way they have pivoted to pro continue programming through this pandemic, it's, it's just been amazing to me. Um, I, I, I feel like this is a full-time job just doing this one one um, Zoom, and there are people who are doing this like all day, every day. So uh, that's amazing. But if you get a chance, please visit their their website and gallery. Casita, it's it's in the chat. Um, Casitamaria.org. Um, so thanks again, Gail. So Brandon has snuck in. She came in through the through the back entrance. Hello. If my internet, if I disappear, it's because uh, my internet went out. The electricity in my building just went out, I guess, because of the storm. So if so I disappear, I'm okay. <laughs> all right, we, will not, we will not call the police if you disappear. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so, so I've, I've said all of my stuff. So Brandon, you can. Oh, yay. So. I actually wanted to start off, if anyone wants to, um, maybe give us 
anyone that is married give us their proposal story. <laughs> and that's like, in, in honor of this chapter. And I like that. Chapter, I'd like to, so if anyone wants to, you can go ahead and just jump on in. If not, we can move on. We live in a single world. Yeah. Well, I'm not married, but I have. Um, You're close enough. <laughs> but I was just told one day to go look at rings and send him my like top five so he could send it. So he could. And I was like, no, you're supposed to do it. Like, whatever you get, it's not about the ring. He's like, yeah, but I, you know, I just want to know your style. And I'm like, I don't even know my style. I never, you know, I don't care. I don't really. So, yeah. And I'm like, that's how you're going to do it? Like, you can tell me to go look for rings. <laughs> But that was it, and I and I started to, but I never sent him the rings, and that was like two years ago. <laughs> Maybe oh. that's why I haven't been proposed to yet. <laughs> I'll play around. At my age, I would love that. That somebody sent me to pick Dave's most expensive ring. <laughs> <laughs> For sure, I would take twenty thousand dollar ring. <laughs> <laughs> That might not start the marriage off on a good note. <laughs> <laughs> that might say a lot about you or or or, or <laughs> I understand, Jesse. I can be your mom. <laughs> <laughs> what did you I, I wanna hear the stories though. There's there's no there's no stories. That was the problem. Oh. I've been married for almost 40 years, and okay. so the details are a little, little fuzzy, but um, my husband was, is, was in the military at the time, and we had been commuting back and forth all summer, had an, an incredible summer. We had been dating. We were actually high school sweethearts, and then we went away to college, got back together, um, and I knew it was coming. We had sort of talked about it a little bit. But near the end of, of his leave, it sort of, he looked like he had something to say when he got up that morning. And it literally took him all day to <laughs> finally say it. And, you know, it's like, but, but your plane is leaving in a half an hour. And he's like, yeah, yeah, but. And so finally he said, I think we should do this. And then he got on a plane and we had to wait another couple of months before we picked out a ring. And then we had to wait another couple of months before we told our families. So. That's that's my story. <laughs> that's sweet though. <laughs> but yeah, it was sweet watching him wiggle throughout. The, you know, yeah. I mean, it'd be like, you want some more juice? And, uh, and, and well, you know, did you pack yet? Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. You noticed from the morning that he got up. That he got <laughs> no, it was the last day. I knew. I, I like I said. I, I suspected it was coming, and I knew he was leaving. So it was like, well, if it's coming, it's got to be you know sometime within the next eight to ten hours. <laughs> That's nice. That's great. Great. Yeah. Yeah. But I like the story because even though I mean they, I mean they loved each other, but not in that you know young romantic way. Um, but even they, you know, respected, loved each other, and they got together in the end. And I, I say, and I, I should. Say. <laughs> I agree. But I, it was kind of like she was twenty-one again on some parts. It was kind of that young when she was like waiting for him to call or waiting between waiting for a phone to ring between the interviewer and Isaiah. That was kind of like, and that felt fun and like a young crush. Yeah. That was, that was lust. That was, that was, I don't know if it was love. It was lust. <laughs> Which is fine. <laughs> lust is good. <laughs> <laughs> Isaiah scratched an itch for her. She actually who, said who doesn't it, want to be it was something that she wanted. But, you know, she just didn't want it with Wallace at the time. She, right. she wanted that in her life. All right. I was thinking about this a 
lot, actually. Like, can you have love without lust? No. I don't, <laughs> but I don't think so say. either. I think you need it. I don't, no, I don't think no. so. I don't think so either. No, that that relationship. I love the story, but I think that relationship was built on convenience. Built on what? Yeah, convenience. And yeah. Convenience on both sides. This is truly a story about the struggle of lonely versus alone. That's that. This is what this is. It's and financial dependence. I'm sorry? Yeah. And financial. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. So yeah. therefore, that's where the convenience aspect comes along. I'm sorry. I do want to believe in love and all of this, but that wasn't love. She mm -hmm. clearly would said it several times. I don't love you. And he, wow, did you see that? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, let me see. Um, and he and she said it and he said it's okay like you know it's fine like I don't need that and I want I don't want to say they were old because 58 is really not old and neither is 60 but they almost acted older than that yeah the, their personalities <clears throat> their ailments were older than that or it seemed, I mean, not to say that rheumatoid arthritis comes to any age, but when you think about it, you think about people that are older. But 60 and 58 is not old. And she started feeling this when, what, she's like 55, you start going back when she starts like saying, oh, um, five years ago, and five years ago I had sex. So you're like, oh, 55 or right. 55. Three. And then you're like adding up the math. This wasn't love. I'm sorry. Like, this was okay at the end. Like, she knows what she wants, what's most beneficial to her. And unfortunately, it wasn't Isaiah. Isaiah, I don't know who said it, but said it perfectly. He scratched the itch. And that's okay. That's where you see oh my god like even though she's 58 that's not old but wow like she's still acting like she's like 20 something and let's face it ladies like we all feel that way sorry mm -hmm. god. you know like we all feel that way. no matter what age we are we could be 50 60 well you know i'm not 50 60 young, but i'm saying i'm sure anybody that's 50 60 70 in that age range has still that childish like feeling that oh wait a minute this guy is interested in me he's 62 so he's like a mac daddy like a sugar daddy you know like acting like whatever but she likes it she likes the attention and what's wrong with that she's a woman she's lived her life she had her son so what's wrong with that but at the end she sees all right well i'm gonna have to settle for wallace you know like he hears my stories and and okay, well, this is just comfortable. Who wants it's comfortable? Safe. But safe. I don't know if she's settling. I don't know if she's settling. I think they did love each other, but not like I said in that romantic, you know, way. You know, because why would she go up and change his clothes and, and wash his clothes and do it? She didn't have to do all that stuff. E anyway. I think and so then and then with, with Isaiah I mean, you know, she got her jollies off, which is fine. That's good. You know, but I think she could see, especially at the end, that he wasn't really interested in her as a person, you know? And so, you know, so then she, you know, saw that, you know, she had these particular needs, financial needs and emotional needs, et cetera. So then she said, okay. And then, um, what's his name? Uh, was, you know, in the hospital and um he gave her that ring so he i think she felt okay this may be my last chance you know to really be connected to somebody so you know you don't always have to have that really the hot for somebody in order to you know hook up with them you know why do you, why do you think like them she, they so liked hard. each other what 
Why do you think he introduced her to his daughter? Like, what was that about? Oh, Christmas. Christmas. Yeah, yeah. That, that's simplistic. I mean, that's like, she's, he's like, okay, well, I need to bring someone that fits the bill. The age. Was, she fit the bill. She was around his <laughs> age and, you know, it, it was, and she, not only that, she was, she was um, probably a comforting person. And he even says it too. Like, oh, you know, I, at some point he says it when, when she leaves or something like that. She fits the bill. That's it. She fits the bill for that moment. And but that also to avoid the criticism from the daughter, you know, like, oh, you hanging out with somebody that can be my sister? Yes. No. You know, that's, probably. that's the child or girl that he's always like kind of around with. You know, it was very sad to read the, the chapter. I actually couldn't finish the last pages because I keep going back to read, like, did I read him right? Like, did I understand this? It was like, a, oh my God. I tried mm -hmm. not to judge. I know this is fiction. <laughs> tried to have like a day <laughs> when I read things, but I was like, a, oh no. If you my friend, I will fix you up. Like, what is your worth as a woman, as a person? Like, a, for me, she's like a person who let everything pass by and she's kind of waking up right now, right? Her mm -hmm. word is so like, <laughs> I, can't, I can't even describe right now how I feel. I feel mad at her. <laughs> you know, she, has, she has an attitude, but I don't see that she was able to use the attitude when she needed. Right. And actually, when I was reading the story, the part about, you know, her customer, a Chico, it kind of transformed me back into the movie The Help. I don't know if you guys saw that movie. Kind yeah. of like, oh, what is this lady trying to do now with this? It's like the connection was so like a kind of crazy dynamic going on. I think you hit it on the nail when you said that her time was up. She actually says it in the beginning. Like that's, that's how she truly felt. And her life is the proven, proven picture that it really is up. And her settling for Wallace proves that. Like, oh, this might, some, somebody mentioned it. This might be my last opportunity at love. So you know what? I'm, I'm going to go for it. This is, this is something comforting. And this is something that I need. And she's looking at all the bills. And she's looking at all this. But also, like Orphalina, I also felt like a little bit as a woman, I also felt like, wow, you've been doing this for 40 years, 40 years. You've been doing this type of work. It says it, past 40 years. And so basically do the math. She's 48, 40 years. So you've been doing this since you've been 18? Your problems didn't arise now? I mean, what... I hate to say this because everybody has a different walk of life, but what have you done to prove in the last year? You know, I don't know. Like, I, I think I agree with our aspects. Like, you know, and you know, I, I wasn't like too um, caught up in the in the portion that she spent a lot of years doing the same work. It was more like she said, oh, for all the people around her with our lot of ego to come out, like to defend herself, to become somebody else. Like she allowed them basically to walk over. That's but the part that, that, that still, bothers me. But you know what? That is a reflection upon how she feels for herself. Hmm? If yes. you allow those type of people to come into your life, whether it's on a personal level or uh, whatever type of level there is, then that's a reflection upon you. And I hate, I, I know that's bad because sometimes we don't see it. And sometimes it hurts to see the truth. We've all been there. We've been in relationships that we, th these guys, they may not be the best for us, but we love them, we love them, we wanna be with them, blah, 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 blah. But, I mean, it's, that's just a learning process. But did you read the part that is said that um, she wanted to better herself? 
She was mm. taking some courses online at the library. Yes. Mm -hmm. She wanted to get a different type of job. Yes. Yes. And she even got that interview. Yes. I think so I, much. I, sorry. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I really like that that she didn't let even the coming of her best friend, who was a manager at the company, whatever, to kind of bring her down. I really like the fact that she even, you know, empowered her story, sat out, went to the interview, even though her friend told her exactly the scenario. She has somebody younger next to her, even a master's degree, who kind of like put her out of the position. It was sad though that you know she tried all of that and then. At the interview, she was offered another type of job. I feel like, oh my God. She was I, like, I don't, I'm waiting. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Yeah. Oh, hi. Sorry. So, I, I, on a different perspective of this, for me, where, like Barbara said, her time feels up. She feels stiff. Like she's tired, obviously. And I also think she genuinely did what she did for Wallace because she truly felt their connection in that sense so right. because of her job if you love it you still present that out i think for wallace he really had the stability to take care of her listening to their problems because there was that time where they would talk to each other about everything mm -hmm. um that he just wanted her to be set because like you said she didn't have to do all the things that she's done remember she doesn't have a relationship with her grandkids the job interview really wanted for housekeeping and she could have changed that to say, I'll be the damn good housekeeping I can be, you know, because that was her experience. Um, also for Isaiah, like you said, she fit the bill. Isaiah was dealing with these young chicks in the gym. That wasn't who he wanted to bring his granddaughter around, um, around his daughter. He wanted some type of a nod from his daughter to say, good job, dad, kind of some type of like satisfaction, like a check, like, you know what, you did a good job, dad, or just whatever he needed from his daughter at that moment. Isaiah, for now, for, for her, all of Isaiah was really like, like uh, Laura, Laura said, that itch, you know, like, look, I know he could be, I'm hurting with all my arthritis, but in the time of need, <laughs> that Ben Gay is gone, right? Right, right. <laughs> so I think for Olive, when she decided that it might not be going anywhere else for her, like while his heart attack kind of made her open her eyes, I don't want to lose my friend. I don't have to be in love, but it's that companionship that where because we work so much, you don't get to know your partner, right? So now her life is... I still want to talk. I want somebody to talk to. And maybe she didn't want to lose that where it's like, I don't think she settled. I think she just, they both don't want to be without each other for conversation. Mm -hmm. But I think that she knew that she wasn't going to get anything out of uh, Isaiah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. You know, for sure. That was and, never and Wallace was the one that, you know, was more of a security blanket for her. Yes. But Isaiah you know, tough, tickled her feathers, you know, like, oh, yes. he still likes me. I'm still, I'm still a little hottie. <laughs> Man, and makes me feel those 25 year olds. Exactly. Yeah. That's all Isaiah was for her. And even though she looked to say, oh, if her phone rang, she thought it was him. That's that, like, like you said, that young crush, like, girl, I know I still got it, you know. <laughs> whoever it, even if wallace did that but she wasn't looking from that from wallace she just knew that isaiah liked younger chicks and that she still can rock off with isaiah too at her age mm -hmm. so he could be hustling busting with them girls but yeah he's still coming up my doorstep when time is right right <laughs> it, 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 it made her seem somewhat delusional also <laughs> in the sense that like like what Barbara said, like she has been living her entire life in this, I, I don't want to categorize, categorize the job as menial, but she thinks she can be more than just a house cleaner. Right. This woman she considers a friend or vice versa only sees her really as a house cleaner because, you know, Christmas Eve, she wants her to come over and, and clean the house and cook 
And she also has all of these medical bills that she's not addressing, which seems mm -hmm. delusional that she is still kind of caught up in like this next better job that you, I mean, even she is trying to make her life better, but it doesn't seem like there was anything substantive that she did to and address making her life better. Correct. It's and as, as a type A personality, letting those bills go just really annoyed me. <laughs> yeah. just, no, just, you know that they, they stacked up and she's walking on them and it's like yeah. I, I i just couldn't deal with that <laughs> i was going to ask, no no but but if you don't have the money to pay right. them you know what up you know some people deal with things in a different way but i guess she doesn't have the, so it's like you know maybe just i gotta go on with life i just might as well just act like they're not there which is like you said a type a personality that's not you know, the right thing to do, but I think we've all been there, you know. Um, <laughs> maybe she knew deep down Wallace loved her and, and maybe she knew that Wallace would have saved her at some point. So maybe her not paying the bills was yeah. a reflection of saying, look, I got $800. Do I want to pay this 40 grand medical bill or do I might want to buy, you know, just something for Isaiah? I'm going to go buy something for Isaiah. I'm telling you right now, like I, I'm not going to pay the bill. Forty thousand, you know, it's not going to damage my credit, you know. Eight hundred I made from Gertrude is not going to put a hole in that, you know, forty grand, and it's not even a good faith gesture. So I think her like one of the things I I used to be a bowler, so when they said they like fell down like a a, a pins right. on the alley, I was and and when that ball hit strike. That feeling, I was like, oh, this is exciting. Like, <laughs> real though. Not, you know, whether she's a housekeeper, she was just trying to do for Noah or, you know, get good graces with her grandkids. The bills wasn't the priority. They were. Know, at, at, at 58, at, they, they at better 55. be. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I was trying to say. But that's the type of attitude and disposition that I feel a 20 something year old should have. Okay. Well, yes. I surgery i had whatever it is let it'll figure itself out oh whatever i'm gonna walk on my heels on these bills like that honestly showed me an irresponsibility to yes. me I'm looking at olive as if she was my mother and i was like really like my mother wouldn't do that like you're striving and my mom is a single parent so guess what she strive, you can strive. I don't care about your arthritis. My mom has arthritis too. <laughs> do what you need to do. Like, do what you need to do. If you're going on your hands and knees, paying um, whatever, I'm not saying you have to pay for the $4,000. I mean, piecemeal. I know it's hard, but she's not the only single parent in this whole entire world. So I don't really give much respect for her because of that. Because I have other women strong women around me that i'm like nah I, nah i'm not i'm not going for that i'm sorry i'm going for the itch yes i could i could go with that but the one thing i will say about her and her relationship or her somewhat relationship with isaiah is the fact that she was infatuated with him because of all the things she wasn't if you see that on page 51 she says that she says she's his financial security his physically sound emotionally independent she's describing all the things that she's not and like what she said at a woman of her age i think you should start having a different type of mentality i think that she was almost kind of settling for you know what like Ben said maybe i already know i have wallace on the side i know he's going to take care of me regardless because he knows my issues so you know what um what if you're not taught with good how to how to what if you're not taught yeah. to like you can be responsible and be the woman um that's independent and strong-minded women but what if it wasn't taught to her how to really be in her household? Okay, she's been divorced. 
So there, it doesn't touch on why she was divorced, but who's to say that it was never a, an issue of her handling a financial part of her situation, whether she was single or married? Because, I, I, I mean, it's, I've, I've grown up and saw someone where you would think they had it all, but financially they didn't. And it was like a struggle where it was a household trying and trying, but bills just kept piling up because you never feel like you're always behind the eight ball. I don't think that takes away from the character of her as a woman. I think you get to a place where you don't want to really, I don't want to call my friend to say, yo, look, I want a bill of $700. How am I going to pay it? Like I'm, I, I, you get embarrassed for that aspect, but what if you just, she just didn't have enough to get ahead. She was just always behind the eight ball. And when it came to that household of bills, you know, and I think, I mean, listen, I, I'll be honest, I, I'm a married woman. And last year, the rates, I live in Long Island and the rates for the water bill, and I'm not lying, really went up to, a, a, I didn't know it was going up. And when I got the bill, the bill was almost $800 for a water bill. And I nearly called the Freeport Electricity, I mean, water people like, excuse me, d d d d is something wrong? They're like, do you have a leak? No, I don't have a leak. Why is my bill $800? Now, I couldn't afford to pay. I didn't. I, w I refused to pay $800 for a water bill. So I called everybody in Freeport that I had a number. Your water bill is expensive? Like, what the heck? I just couldn't understand it. And I, and I think sometimes it's like, like I said, I could have paid it, but I piecemealed them because I was like, $800? But you know what? It was the sprinklers. It's that season. It's the mm -hmm. summertime. And I'm, you know, now, yes, I probably have a better grip this year to say, okay, let's put $800 aside so I'm not arguing with them. But I'm just saying, like, I think sometimes as women or, or whoever in a household, if I get a medical bill that I thought my insurance was going to pay for, I'm, I'm not paying it right away. And I don't want to do that. Maybe I want to spend the 90, you know, with Isaiah or buy a, a lingerie that looks sexy for the moment. So I, I don't think her priorities was over or different. I just feel like, it doesn't take away from her being strong to not pay her bills. I, I, don't, I don't think that makes her character. She, yeah. she gave her all but to she, Wallace. No, and I agree. I, I think I, the author, I'm, so, oh, I'm sorry. No, go, no, go she, ahead. No, okay, no, I think the author like purposely wrote this character. It's like kind of sad, you know, like for her age and just like That's something, you know, like purposefully, like there were so many things wrong with her and so many things she didn't do right. And like, you know, just maybe to have a discussion, but also just kind of like to just step back and be like, you know, I mean, you be like, I mean, it was sad that she was always trying to get like a compliment from this man that she was already sleeping with. You know, like she kept asking him if she was pretty and asking him about the young women he was dating. And it was like, you know, you're already with him. Like you already know. I mean, he had to find her somewhat attractive, but they were already, you know, he let her spend the night in his house. Um, I mean, he did introduce her to his daughter. So it was like different things. I, you know, I don't know if I'm making sense, but like things that she could have pulled on to, to stay with him. And then, you know, and then Wallace, that situation, I, I think that she did love him in, the, in her own way. And just maybe to think about like, what is love? And like, can you get everything from one person? You know, it's like, is that one person that's a provider for you and the other person like you're very sexually attracted to? So I guess maybe that, that's what I, I, I thought of it. And early, I thought on, also, early on yeah. in the story, she talks about how she feels and the only place that she really felt good was when she was in the bathroom because she could pretend that beyond those doors, she had more rooms and not just that, that little tiny space that she was living in where the bedroom was also the living room and just stuff like that, you know, and even with her and Wallace, I think they had been friends for maybe a year or two before he even tried to have sex with her and she didn't you know but I think that they got closer as she did what she did for him and then she decided okay maybe this is not so bad after all <laughs> just to go no. with him I think really she got she was really fond of Wallace because everything she did for him she never charged him she just did it for free so I think she, on top of that being fond of him she also liked him, but not in that special way. 
She from me to her. <laughs> Who Wallace? Um, it's hard for me to believe that she loved him. Like she so even said that. Uh, was she, in the same building. Doa. What is the name of the other guy that lives in the same building? Wallace. Wallace. Yeah, he was mean. The comment that he made. What comment? About, uh, about the computer. He made comments about her look. Like, like we don't know anything. That's, that's why. I don't oh, think that was no, mean. No, that's mean comments. No. No, <laughs> no. those friends. Wallace. No. Little battle relationship back right. and forth little thing. That's not that was I don't think that was mean at all. She she even said, gosh, even when I know I want to hear something different, he tells me the truth. The truth. Oh, no, that, that was mean. But the reason why I feel like that relationship, I wouldn't call it love, because she even said on page forty three that she liked she was doing what she's doing, cooking for him and all that stuff was because she had a friend, a friend that was more de right. more likely depressed than she was, that she could help him. She'll cook him dinner. Like she reminded, he reminded her of her blessings. And then when that situation happened with, um, when he had a stroke and Isaiah didn't offer the cab and she started crying, she even said she felt shame because her tears were, were not for his heart attack. It was about what she was going through with Isaiah. So while I do, I do agree with what someone said in the beginning about that relationship being more of convenience. I guess through time and stuff, they grew love for each other. And I'll, I believe that they care about each other and they have a genuine friendship, but it's just hard for me to feel like she loves him in that way. And it, it's, that's not love to me. But I don't think it's gonna be love in that aspect that we're thinking it should be at 60. Right. I think it's more of a, love companionship exactly it's like just there. Yeah. Right. So I, I think also like i received this beautiful gift today in the mail and it was a little card that tells me i'm enough i'm beautiful i'm strong enough and it reminds me of olive of when she went into the mirror she just never looked at herself to say this is enough and i don't i don't really think her saying yes to like he bought the ring he probably had that ring when he first met her because he thought she was so beautiful. Or a heart attack getting the ring. Right. <laughs> so I mean, he just knew. He probably knew he had something, but I mean, I know they said that in the in the story, but it's like he I think it was more of their love story of talking. I mean, when you look at older people, the intimacy of it it's different. It's gonna be a, a just a talking. Right. Yeah, but they both got elements that they feel like they're 88. Don't say older people. I know that's right, Ron. Yeah, because mama was 64. Mama was 64. I'll be 69 in two weeks. But see, my mom is 67, not living her best life. She thinks not doing anything. So when I think of that, I tell her she's enough and she can do stuff, but she's like, I am fine in the house. So when I look at Olive and Wallace, and I don't mean it to say, older they're older than me yeah, but i me. i say it to say that older relationships that old school love Have where i think that i think for us right we're putting more stuff when we're reading these books it's like okay we can do it remember how i said if you're going to be independent why do we need anybody right so i feel like with olive and wallace they're just more, she's not settling. I think she just needs, finally, she'll get out of that rut. He can help her in that way. And then she'll realize it wasn't, I wasn't like, it's like a dream come true for her. It's, I, I, I kind of went past there. She said, yes, finally. I was all like, oh, good. Then that's going to be a dream come true. She can finally get into her bills or whatever else that was needed and she didn't have to worry and still take care of Wallace in that in that aspect of see my mom just came in she thought I was uh, upset <laughs> <laughs> it's like, like you said my name <laughs> <laughs> but I just oh, think it's just tells him, like uh, let's get married she says why get married why don't I just move into your apartment? It's bigger. We can, we can still do the things instead of having two apartments. Yeah. So she feels like she's comfortable with him. Now, see, I thought yeah. that was the question I all along. Right. I, I thought the question that... Proposed, she would have accepted it. If Isaiah would have proposed, she would have, that's what she really wanted. Oh, yeah. 
out. Bye, Wallace. Bye, boy. And she would have been right back telling Wallace how miserable she Love. is. But so what? Much. Love me. That's it. That's well, that's all is what it's about. So this is my. But point. Isaiah soon be washed up, and he can't provide anything else. <laughs> so she'll be back to Wallace. Because <laughs> of the girls. Well, he's not gonna give her any money. Isaiah just looks really selfish. Like it's all about him. He's right. Tall, yes. He's tall, like he can't even give her money. For the and he ass. likes her. He could not even bring she's her to not, the daughter's she, house. He yeah. left her out. She's, out of the bus. Yeah. she's yeah. only known him for like nine months, I think, and she's known for over three years. No, no, he's just. Oh, uh, Isaiah he's just, just using, using her. her. <laughs> yeah. He's just self consumed But I have one thing to say about. Uh, Wallace and Olive's relationship. This is a very difficult conversation to have with a group of people that are all age ranges because we all are in different stages in our lives. So generally, this is going to be a very tough conversation to have because some people that are older, Scary, Ron, you're right, you're right. 58 is not. There's nothing oh, wrong with being old. Let me, let me just, can I just say my this? Sure, my nothing sure. nothing wrong with being old. It's a fact of life. <laughs> what? What? They're saying there's nothing wrong with being old or older. It's a fact of life. No, and right. I don't think that's old, though. More really experienced. Huh? More experienced. It's a number. <laughs> Seasoning. So, what, with that what? <laughs> what, 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 I didn't, what I didn't like about how she wrote the character was, why did she give? Why did she give the the woman like old people ailments? Right. Yes. Yes. Like yes. he's walking with a cane and like every fifteen <laughs> seconds he got to take a breath. Oh, ageism. They all felt way older. Yeah. Than yeah. they really were numerically. Right. And but with experience, because inside her, she acted like a very young when she did the the little thing, the nasty thing in the bathroom with the toothbrush. Like, a, I'm a sure person would do that. Like, that was like, oh my God, you're doing that? <laughs> or, or she was thinking about um, in Isaiah's uh, car. And doing yes, the legs. yes, yes. And the legs and the yes. And she, was like, and she was like, "Well, at least I'll be the first to do it." Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Don't want them young girls. Like she, she yeah. Could, yeah. She could have kept their ages. She could have kept their ages the same, but just not give them old ailments. Right. I didn't understand that. I didn't get understand it either. And not, I didn't even like that either. I didn't like it either. I didn't like because it at all. I, I'm sorry, but arthritis is not just for the old. <laughs> a lot right. of young people have the I arthritis. I think young people walk around. I don't. I. I think. Listen, I was watching Family Feud. They said, "When do people start <laughs> feeling they got problems?" They said, 40. That was the number one answer. So, <laughs> I, I, <Right. laughs> and, I, and I, I think it's just. I think she was young at heart, just yeah. older on the outside. Plus, she could take an operation on her ankle, and then if she didn't take her meds, then her knees acted up. So she had arthritis. Like you, psych psychologically, you equate arthritis with being an older person. Young yeah, people get, I, I definitely understand that young people do get arthritis, and middle-aged people get arthritis. I get that, but I think in a short story where you only have 20 or so pay of 50 pages, that's a lot to burden one character with and ask the reader to not take that into right. account with uh, how you sort of imagine age and this character. It just felt like they didn't go together. On the one, or maybe that was the purpose. On the one hand, she is this outwardly young person where she wants to, you know, have sex in the back of a car and, and all that <laughs> stuff. But she's also burdened with these older, older age ailments. So, so maybe that was the purpose, I guess. But you know, now that you said that wrong, I was thinking like, not to kind of diagnose her, but she sounds to me like a very depressed person. 
that go like in swim moon from time to time. This idea yeah. for the final bills, this little self worth that seeking her attention, you know, just to compensate herself as a woman, yeah. it kind of put me back into a lot of things back then, like, you know. The, the author didn't refer anything about mental health or things like that. Everything is just under the appearance, like the arthritis, you know, how she walks. But I'm I, I just wondering, like, if it's just something that it was kind of on purpose to kind of cover it up, uh, maybe because yeah, like it's also, it's also taboo for a um, group of people, especially minority. I, I don't know. I just was wondering. When you mentioned the term mental health, what came to my mind was how she would use her grandkids to justify the things that she did and and just to make herself feel better and coping mechanisms. Yeah. And um, like even with the bills and all that stuff. And then she has to... I'll bring the keys too. I and put the cheese with them and things like that. Like she, yeah. she, def she definitely had... Um, some mental health issues. She I mean, talks to them also, like they are real people. I mean, like they are living right there with her. Yeah. yeah. She made yeah. up like stories about them coming to visit her as well, the grandchildren. So she definitely, mm -hmm. I think that though was what we were talking about. Someone mentioned earlier about being alone versus being lonely, right? I think she was lonely because we see her making up these stories about with Gertrude about her grandchildren coming to spend time with her, right? But I think she's alone, obviously, because we know she's kind of debating between these two men that she wants. One thing that I thought was super interesting, though, that I'm curious to know what you ladies think is how- And men. <laughs> and men. <laughs> and <laughs> um, <laughs> Brand, before you ask, is that for mature people or for the younger people here? <laughs> <laughs> just kidding, just kidding. Um, it's like reading this story, could you take the age out? Could this be an ageless story? I don't think we needed her to be old. Yeah. I don't think, when I got to the end, I was like, yeah. so she's not going to be old. She didn't need to be young. She didn't need to have arthritis. She didn't need to have any children. This could have yes. almost been the story of at any age. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Exactly. This was Absolutely. the only story. The lives. Mm -hmm. So in that I think that she was burdened, like Ron was saying, with these ailments of old age. To, to kind of have a reflection, right, on life, that everything goes into a circle. She's not paying her bills like a 20-year-old, even though they come into the house. She's waiting on an interview that she may not get because of her age, because of, of her ailment. Maybe that's an older thing, but also I remember being 20 and, and, and going for jobs that were way out of my league too, that older people were going to get because they had more experience, right? So I was thinking about this a lot and reading this. It's very clear that a, a younger person was writing on the POV of an older person. So that's probably the first thing you think of when you're younger, like, oh, what do old people have on right but I think that one yeah. thing that really hit me was that, I mean, shit, who does want to be 50 and alone, you know? I, I, don't. Know, I, don't, know <laughs> she, I don't know if she's settled as much as she is, is just living life. This was tricky for me. This was tricky for me. I, I want to say that um, I think that it helped her be with Wallace because it helps you deal with your own mishaps when you see other shortcomings. And a proof of that was on page 43. Someone else read that when they said that she had a friend, that her friend, I think it was Jess, I think she may have said this, that her friend was likely more depressed than she was. I mean, sometimes you want to hear others' problems because it makes you feel better about yours. That's one. Two, on page 71, I'm going to make a Colleen comparison, okay, people? 
at this moment, <laughs> what can, what she can afford most is her time. Yeah. She's with Wallace because she wants to be needed. Wallace needs her. Wallace has his own problems. Wallace, and I hate it because you're right, Brandon, they don't have to even mention the age here. They really don't, you know? I mean, they make me feel like, Jesus Christ, are these like 85-year-old people? Like, I mean, 90-year-old people ready to retire? And then, yeah. I mean, I live next to a 99-year-old man, and he got married for three times. So I'm in my mind, I'm like, oh, wow. I mean, at the end of the story, what I felt wasn't, oh, they're going to get married and stuff. You know what I felt like? I felt like she's going to go to the hospital, say, yes, I do. And he's going to be like, too late. I'm dead. He probably. <laughs> <laughs> because I'm like, Jesus. <laughs> and then when you see he's only, si I'm like, really? He's only yeah, 60. And then I, I never thought that it was going to be a happily ever after story. I thought huh, she's going to go take the ring and bring those two books and he's going to be dead. They but, were I think, but I think they were more friends than anything. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Definitely. Yeah, but he, because but Wallace was she, the only one that, uh, well, actually, Wallace and her son were the only ones who visited her in the mm -hmm. hospital. Mm -hmm. You know, and I, and I think the author um, included that kind of age group and their illnesses just to to make it more ground grounded and more real you know it, it, it's something that the reader will pick up quickly and sort of say oh gee you know poor people you know it's like i i don't know i think no. uh, she just included that well i think i think the age is important too in that things don't change like my grandma always like a like a, a young fool's gonna be an old fool like people don't you know what I mean? Like you're the same or your life is going to go the way it goes unless you make a change, no matter what, like just because you, you know what I mean? Like things are supposed to happen at a certain age. Like you graduate college at 21 or, you know, this, things like that, but that everybody just doesn't follow a timeline. Like the mm -hmm. expectations that a 50 year old woman or a 58 year old woman would, would have insurance or pay her bills or, you know, would be able to do these things is just like, or, or that a 60 year old man would not still be in these streets flirting with old young women, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you, would, you would think that would change, but it's like, it just doesn't, you know, yeah. and it's just, you, you Wait, know, I think they, that's, yeah, I think that's why the age is important. I don't even know why this part sticks out for me is that she was like in his bathroom and I was like, why does this woman have cornrows? Like, I don't know. I was getting ready to say that, Rachel, that's about her cornrows <laughs> on the interview. Like, her friend had to tell <laughs> What? And then, and then right. Had, um, Vaselina here. I was like, girl, come on now. <laughs> but, yeah, that's, but that's what I'm saying. She's not taught yeah. these things. So when we look yeah. at her and judgmental of it, right? What she knew. I mean, you were gonna put a suit on with those cornrows to <laughs> and an interview, right? <laughs> As a right. So right. that tells me, but right? It, that only told me when she was a black woman, right? Because I don't know no white lady with cornrows. <laughs> <laughs> so. <laughs> And, and so her friend told her, the, you know, what to look for, what to do. Make sure you take them cornrows out, right? And I was just thinking, cornrows? Like, yep. she, and, and like, um, I, I forget the young lady who said in the beginning, like, the help. Um, what, like, that, I, I, did, I do think of that movie now, that <laughs> the cornrows, like, that's what it was for her. So really, as much as she wanted to be the admin administrator, what would you have done with the cornrows on a nice suit? And you saw how can I add some of the kind of cornrows too? I mean, you know, people have people have cornrows that are that are elaborate. You know, it's not just you know just up uh, straight back and down or whatever. But you know, let me just say this: I think age <laughs> is important because as you, get, I'm old. Okay, I don't. That's that's who I am. But <laughs> but I'm saying that as you get older, you know, you're, as a woman, your choice of men is limited. I mean, that's a fact of life. I mean, you know, you, of course you can, you can, you know, like if you're 60, you could go out with a 30 year old man, but that's very rare, you know, and 
you do, and as an older person, you do have different ailments. So, I mean, those things are real. I mean, like her not um, um, being financially savvy. <laughs> That's another thing. You know, I mean, that doesn't, that doesn't mean. <laughs> another thing. Financial, you know, financially um, ignorant. I mean, you know, she could have, she could have, you know, done better in terms of that. She, all the years that, you know, she was um, doing housekeeping, she could have learned more. But you know, we all could have, could have, would have, should have. <laughs> really. No, if you notice, the mother and son are the same way. He's broke and she's broke. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> yep. You know, so I, I don't think neither of them learned how to, you know, like, oh, there's a future. We need to save now for, you know, a rainy day. Which might go back to why she's divorced. But I think age is important here because of the, pa to, to illustrate the passage of time. I think once you hit that 50-ish mark, you begin to realize that there's more time behind you than ahead of you. And I think in the story, that's important in her making her choice. So I, I, I do think that knowing the ages, I don't think she needed to make them as burdensome as she did, but knowing the ages really, I think to me, it, it was important. I agree. A younger, a younger woman would have probably just walked away from both of them and started anew. But she, at that age, she, did, she didn't have that kind of time. She felt she didn't have that kind of time. And think about it. She'd have 40 years like you and be 98 with Wallace. So they're going to be just <laughs> fine. <laughs> <laughs> the only reason I'm like okay. trying to say, it's like a path that you can choose. Let's say like if you're at a young age and you read, you read what's happening to them, you're going to say, I don't want that to happen to me. So I have to, you know, shape up. Because if not, I'm going to go through that road. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't no. think young people are that smart. Old <laughs> <laughs> people are not that smart either. <laughs> oh, but you know what? We love that. Come on, ladies. Stop it right now. We love that cat and mouse chase. Come on. <laughs> Put your hands up. Who? I don't care what age you are. You know we love that cat and mouse chase. We love that. I don't care how old you could be 70 on this platform right now I, I, or 80, whatever your age is. I, you're beautiful and you know whatever. Like Miss Linda said, she's been married 40 years. So what? You know how much cat and mouse chases she must have had? Like, you <laughs> must have been in that car. Like, no disrespect, Miss Linda, but you know, you must have been in that car thinking, oh, yeah. I <laughs> Yes, yes. yes. <laughs> I, understand. I understand. Rachel, oh. stop it. I see you. Like, I see, like, you understand that like, you feel like, wow, I need to be there. I mean, it's okay. Like, if you're like 20 something or whatever, even 30, like, you're going to be like, ah, oh, yeah, I could dump this guy. But how many of us have stayed in relationships at 20 something and 30 and said, I don't care? Like, I, yo. I'm only here for what? The anaconda, baby. That's all I'm here for. I'm here for anything else. So you can dog me out, do whatever you want. I don't care. But that's like, you know, I don't think, I think completely she, this girl, Kim Joy, she did exactly what she wanted to do to us in this chapter. She confused the hell out of us. She, <laughs> Ron, Ron didn't understand that one. Ron didn't get that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, I'm just saying, like, she did exactly what she wanted to do to us because we are like all over this poor woman, Olive. I mean, but I, I think she I, made us feel hopeful too. I mean, I'm, I looked at Olive like, this is what people want in relationships. Like, Granny, you want somebody to chase you and make you feel cute, but. Like, like it was said, okay, do I really need to put the toothbrush and brush my teeth over some other woman's toothbrush? That insecurity level, I was just like, okay, I like, I liked it, but I was like, okay, at least she's being real in here. You know, at least it was her real thoughts. But I think at the end, 
I think I think for me because I've watched I, I have I have my grandmother turned ninety last a couple of weeks ago, and my grandfather died about twelve years ago, and to this day my grandmother cries if you even mention something that she just didn't know about my grandfather right like we have a different outlook and so that's why I feel the author made it feel hopeful for Olive and Wallace because so many couples are living a life. So they would have been married 60 something years, right? And what if you're just living with a stranger? You don't even know whether he provides and do all this stuff and you think they loved each other. You grow up saying, oh, but it's grandma and grandpa. They love each other, right? But when it came to death, they didn't know each other. And then now, and then that's why I feel like with Wallace and Olive at this age, at 58, that's where you want to make the turning point to kind of have a friend. I, I think people don't know each other. No sex friend? No. They're not she can get him. She can have a friend with a boy. She could get Bob. I, listen, not everybody knows about Bob. Oh, <laughs> who's Bob? Who's Bob? Who's Bob? Bob, who's Bob? The, the, the plumber? No, the battery <laughs> operated boyfriend. She don't want to even because Isaiah is gone. She should just she'd be okay. <laughs> One thing I think is really interesting though, like is like when I was talking about we could take everything out and just this would be a circle of life, uh, similar to what Rachel was saying. I also think one of the really big things in these pages is choices right that shit that making choices and making decisions that never stops right that is a constant thing we are never going to be in a spot where we are so comfortable where we are not in a position where we have to make choices where we have to make a decision it's either one or the other and i think the author really played up that theme in almost every little vignette for example with the bills right she had a choice to pay the bills or not pay the bills, right? And she chose not to pay them. Between Isaiah and Wallace, that was the biggest choice of the pages. She had more like, she had smaller choices, um, to, uh, meeting with their friend Gertrude, going on the interview, um, taking her medication, things like that. Like the idea of like, no matter how, not even no matter how old you get, as you age, some things do not change. And I think one of the major themes is the choice that you have to make that does not change. However, I think one thing, and I'm interested to know what you ladies and Ron think, is like, in that sense of having to make choices, I don't know if I'm convinced that Olive, in her mind, is making the choices of an experienced person or is she making the same choices she would have made when she was 20, 30, 40, 50? Like that idea of growth, that idea of evolution. I think that's one of the things that she kind of got stalled in life and kind of got stuck in the circle where she continues to make the exact same choices. She would probably still be working at the same job, but her body told her she couldn't anymore right so she made the choice to like go to the library and try to start learning some new things to get a different job right mm -hmm. but i think that like even that was because her body failed her and it kind of forced her out of her comfort zone i think she wanted to be with isaiah honestly but i think her body kind of failed her and, and it kind of forced her right to make that choice to be with wallace so it's this idea of like taking a bit of the choices, right? Taking them and making them on your own and like deciding what the choices are or waiting until you are pushed into a position where you have to, you only have one choice left. Definitely, I agree with you about the inability that she seems to have. The question would be like, how come? Is yes. that a learned behavior that she had adopted over the year? That happiness, attitude, or lack of opportunity or support around her? Or it is something internal? Maybe somebody mentioned, maybe she doesn't know how to see support, like, you know. And also, I was trying to figure out the time that the story was written because 
That's a good question. I, I don't know. I found that I kind of will. That she well, didn't we know she had cell phones. We know she had cell right? So we know it wasn't in like the 70s or the 80s or maybe. Right. The yeah, everyone had a cell phone on them. But it was kind of like limited resources that are where she is. But at the same time, she knew. It was like a little bit. Up and coming internet. Something like that, Miss Arpelina. I'm sorry? The up and coming internet. So it wasn't quite, um, there, there was cell phones, but it was kind of like at that bare like limit when it started, the classifieds started coming off of the newspapers and onto the internet. Yeah, that part I don't yeah. yeah. I'm not exactly sure what year that happened, but that's that's the distinguishment that I made, that it was like kind of mid-drift. I don't know when, when, yeah. when it happened. Okay, I'm glad that you said that, maybe in the 80s. <laughs> I think like the late 90s is one. I was like early 2000s. Oh, really? Or yeah, like late nineties, early two thousands around yeah, there. That's what I think. Yeah. So uh, like that oh, wow. the internet, yeah. Yeah. Cyber cafes and stuff like that. I remember being a kid and my sister telling me about getting a computer and I was so mad. I was like, No, I'd rather go to the library. Like I was not trying to learn the internet as a kid, but then yeah. of course eventually I did, but I was like her too. Did you but I think that she not um like um oh sorry. No, no, please finish. Okay. So I was going to say that um, I, I agree with Brandon about her being kind of like stuck in her cycle and being stagnant. Um, but I feel like she had a level of self-awareness because when she was talking about her grandkids' mother and she's, you know, mentioned how she doesn't have a relationship, she said, and I liked how the author worded it too, she said um, if she calls her grandkids' mother she'd be timidly talking to karma instead. So she, <laughs> I love uh -huh. that sentence, but she, she knew, but, and then she still had, you know, her pride to, like Brandon said, she's still choosing, that's a choice to make those same decisions because it's not too late to call and apologize and try to, you know, mend things and see, you know, you still have the rest of your life to live, but she understands what she did and she's still choosing to do the same thing. She's still making that same choice. So, um, so, our, right, so with, with said, do we ever get better? Do we ever get better if we're going to keep making the same choices? I mean, I know that Jen was saying that she may not have been thought, she doesn't know, and that's true, but um, Jen knows that me and her go back and forth with that type of um, thing, but I just kind of feel like, do you, is it, is it a learned thing? that you can't have your hair in cornrows when you're 58? Like, I don't know. I was mad at cornrows. I, the too. thing is that, I, mean, I don't know. My but, mom is 64 and she does her hair in cornrows sometimes and it's so cute, I love it. <laughs> no, it's for the interview part of it. Not so yeah. much. Not so much doing it. It's I can wear cornrows, I, I would rock cornrows. I just think that if she was trying to present herself, that thought shouldn't even, her friend shouldn't have to tell her to take the cornrows out. She but that's evolved. why, because she was used to doing that right. kind of job for so long right. that she thought that if I go on that interview, it's going to be okay too. Right. You know, I don't think yeah. she, she was aware of that. Um, Inappropriate. Of that, you know, it, yeah. I think the setting of what she was going for, though, she was going for an admin assistant position. <laughs> so as a woman with cornrows, that's not the housekeeping now. So now you have to housekeep yourself and say, let me at least wear my hair out or put it back, right? So they can see the beauty of her face. I'm not objective to cornrows. I love corn I love braids, period. I just think there's a time and place for them in a sense of if you're trying to, because she will get judged to be like, okay, maybe it's out of place, or she wasn't even going to do her hair over, even if she did it nicely and put it in a bun, right? But that's, that's what we're taught in that sense of it. So I'm not, the, the car roll part, I do like them. I just don't like them for an interview. Yeah, I don't think, I don't know. Oh, 
when is I was that, is that Eurocentric though? Because you know, you know, when we when we um you know black women have been um criticized for wearing braids, for for wearing natural, for et, et cetera. You know, it depends on the what what it looked like. If it's just you know some scrabbly you know kind of cornrows, that's one thing. But if it looks good and presentable, there's nothing wrong with that. That's part of our heritage. You know. Nah, yeah. I think that was the issue. They, she was saying they sorry. Was, yes, exactly. Yeah, like the, yeah, like she said they were fuzzy, like she right. didn't wrap the hair at not. Like she just sounded she just sounded unkept. Not per se the cornrows were the issue. You know, that wasn't it just seemed like she didn't take care of herself. She, she had she had them in for a while. So they could yeah, be yeah. and everything. Yeah, well that's different. All right. That's yeah. different. But she sounds like she was even offended with the idea of Kane not going to the interview with a conro. That was a stuck to me like a, it was a suggestion given and she was kinda a little bit like, Oh, are you gonna yeah. get the suggestion wasn't have neat cornrows. It was no cornrows at all. It wasn't like make sure your cornrows are nice and neat. It was just no cornrows. I didn't like that. Could, Unfortunately, that is that the world we live been, in, but I didn't like that. But could that have been well, I took a different I knew the culture of the company? I mean, yes, it's it's Eurocentric, um, but there's a, if I know that this particular company is, you know, tweed golf shoe wearing company and I'm sending my friend, I'm going to tug her coattail and say, you know, you need to do the straight thing to, if you want this job. <laughs> straight thing. What do you mean? Straighten her hair? Well, to do, I, I'm saying that if, if her friend is trying to, if I know of a job and I know the, the corporate culture of the job, right. then I'm going to give advice based on what I know about the corporate culture of the job. If I know that I, that there's going to be a sister meeting you on the other side of it, I'm I'm not going to say anything about your cornrows. If I know that it's going to be, you know, for lack of a better example, a Jared Trump on the other side, I'm going to say, hey, those cornrows are not going to work in your favor for this. <laughs> but she did. Exactly. She did. She did. Her friend did tell her, like, uh, no, take take that off. Right. That's on. Well, I don't think it was a knock against the cornrows. I think it was just maybe I know what you're going to be up against. Yep. Okay. Yeah, but if she was a, a true friend and she was uh, head of the human resources or something, she probably would have given her a job. She could have given right. her a job. Oh, that's a good point. I was wondering mm. about that. When, when, we, when I read that part, I was like, wait a minute. She said, oh, I wish I could get you a job, but I can. And literally in that page, I said, why? Why can't you? You're head of human resources. Figure something out. Make a job. I don't know. If my <laughs> daughter, <laughs> if my daughter really needed a job and she was down and out and she just wanted an in, I'd be like, all right, give me a minute. Yeah, that's what I can do for I'm you. Gonna, I'm going to figure it out. I don't know. It's not going to be house cleaning, but we'll figure something out. I, I don't know. But fix your hair, girl. Like, take your hair out because <laughs> you're, you're, not, you're, not my, like you're not representing me. I'll put it on myself. I don't care. Like, you know, you can't do this because then I'm going to look bad. And I think yeah. she did that because she did not want to say, oh, I brought this person in. You know, I feel bad saying that because she thought she was her friend, but she's not really her friend. That was her <laughs> Okay, she put her mother. So that really wasn't her friend. That was a created friendship. Interesting. And, yes, yes. I think it also kind of went to characterize all of it a little bit through other people's eyes in the sense that it says she's great to be the caregiver, you know, of a of an aging mother. So she's not. Mm -hmm. But that's the only position I would recommend her for. Thank you. See what I'm saying? So I think it characterizes her in other people's eyes. Mm -hmm. I'll give you a rave, grave review. Like, what kind of review are you going to give me? What are you going to say? I had to get your 96-year-old mother for five years. <laughs> <laughs> How did you know 
me. Oh, I took care of, she took care of my mom. She's the fantastic person. Okay, how does that help me in this administrative position? She was embarrassed. She did not want to say, I brought this woman under my wing. That's, she was embarrassed. She was embarrassed. Even though she was trying to help her out. But she was still kind of saying, okay, well, you go on your way to the interview in that other company, but not here. It is 8.25. Does anyone have any kind of closing thoughts they want to say? Or anything? If we write the, if we write the chapter, I probably will send Oli to online dating. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. How that's going to work. <sighs> she needs to throw more. <laughs> And Olive has to pretend she's 35. As <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I want to say I do want to say one thing. I read this part, and um, and I know we're talking about love, and you know, and her wanting to be with Wallace, and or no, I say yeah. be with Wallace. Um, but yeah, no, no, her not really wanting to be with Wallace, but her at the end, I'll just call it convenience for, for right now. But I thought about this quote from Toni Morrison and she says, could you really love somebody who was absolutely nobody without you? And to me, I feel like here it says, I don't love you. And he, and he says, and, and she says, no, you don't want me, but you do care for me. Not like you do that boyfriend of yours, but that's fine. It's like you, you're nobody without me. Do I w really want to be with the person like that? So, um, I know I'm not touching it like Toni Morrison did. I mean, who can live up to that type of figure, but I mean, when, she said it, I thought about something Toni Morrison said, and I looked it up and I said, wow, it's the same type of feeling. Like, that's why she was so attracted to Isaiah, because he brought that life, he brought that ambition, that wow, like that, that tough bad boy persona, like, oh, you know what? He's got this, he's put, he's put all together. He makes me want to be a better person. Because in reality, how many of us want to be with a person that's strong, right? You look, whether it's your friend or whether it's a partner or a husband or wife or whatever, you want that strong person by your side because you're like, wow, this makes me want to be even a stronger person. But why would you want to be with someone that doesn't want or doesn't, can't live without nobody? Like, I don't know. That's. It, it speaks a little bit of volumes. I don't know in what extent um, Toni Morrison wanted to put it, but I kind of put that in comparison when I read that part. Yeah, and it, as far as Isaiah goes, it was said that he had that cocky confidence. Yes, yes. But that attracted her, right? Exactly. That made her feel exactly. like, wow, I mean, who knows where she would have gotten gone? I mean, I know Jen was saying, oh, she may have been dumped. And I mean, it's true. He, he probably would have. They would have ended up in a breakup, whatever, two years, maybe even two months later down the line. But what would happen in those two months? Would you turn that into a positive? Would you take this cocky man's attitude and say, well, you know what? He could, I could even better. How about this? He, he's going to make me see the light in a different way, you know? So it helps you. It balanced, it balanced, it, maybe I'm just saying, what if it would have balanced her out? What if it would have made her say, you know what? I got to get my shit together. This guy ha owns a gym. He's with these 20 year olds. Who knows? If yeah, is that an attribute to be, uh, no. to be old man and with these 20 year olds? I don't think that's an attribute. 
Yeah, I, I don't, don't think that's a positive thing. You know, that I, I think there's something wrong with Isaiah, that he has to be with these um, you know, young <laughs> chicks, you know? Give me a break. <laughs> he thinks he's Goldie from the Mac. He's older. <laughs> I say he thinks he's Goldie from the Mac. Right. <laughs> I mean, it's, so good that he owns, um, it's good that he owns his own, you know, business. Fantastic, but that he's sleeping around and right. you know, who, who knows what he's spreading. So that to <laughs> Olive, I don't think she's gonna try to want to better herself to keep up with them because he's already tapping her too. So she already yeah. feels like she falls right in there. I mm -hmm. I think, mm -hmm. uh, what... you know, again in Brandon's closing. I think for me, I take like, ladies, let's not lose out on our bills, you know, because like, it obviously was like a big thing. So, like, pay that water bill. Listen, my water bill is coming in, in next month and I'm not paying it. I'm telling y'all right now, I'm not doing it. <laughs> um, no, I, I just feel like, I think genuinely, I, I, I love that she was caring for someone wholeheartedly. I think in, in, the, in the bigger part of this, I love that she did what she did for Wallace without wanting anything. They didn't paint her out to be the girls I, Isaiah was after. Like, Isaiah was all about his car. He didn't want to show nothing off but the car or whatever. And knowing that, so for her, Olive, she was able to keep up with that sense. She didn't feel insecure with the younger chicks. Um, mm -hmm. I just find in closing that whatever we do, just do it wholeheartedly. Because her mm -hmm. blessing came to her without her even trying or wanting anything from it right that, that's what i see yeah yeah i i just want to say that my closing statement would be don't lose focus on you hmm. right right regardless right whether you're a man or woman in this platform don't lose focus on you i don't yeah. care how old Woo. you are you know <laughs> you're a woman you're still a man and whatever choices you make whether they're wrong right indifferent that you're still you you have to live with yourself so don't lose focus on yourself and that's all <laughs>